Hello, in this video I'm going to talk about the emperors that succeeded um, Caracalla. Now, Caracalla was a ruthless tyrant. He nearly tore up the, the Roman Empire into smithereens. He was ruthless and he was useless. Now, Caracalla was succeeded by Opelius Macrinus, who was a Berber. He was a um, North African, he was a native North African, he was not even Italian or Latin, um, he was also a useless emperor, he was what we call a, like that. Now, Apelius Macrinus was one of these uh, barrack emperors, he was a useless, ruthless man, and so was his son, Caesar. And, well, so like we said, uh, Apelius Macrinus declared himself emperor, somewhere in Mesopotamia, somewhere in, modern day, in, in the borders of modern day Syria and Iraq. Right, and he claimed himself emperor. He was beloved by the troops. The troops soon forgot all about Caracalla because Caracalla was a ruthless tyrant. He was useless. He was a piece of crap. And um, so, um, so Artabanus, so in, in the year, it's 2017. Elpidius Macrinus and his crack Roman troops fought with Artabanus, the king of the Parthians. And the Romans were defeated, they were humiliated, because of because of Pelius Macrinus was a useless emperor. So it so it's quite funny that in Roman times, if the emperor is a good man, so it's quite funny that in Roman times, if the emperor is the capable and good emperor, the Roman troops fight well. Now, if the Roman emperor is a useless rat, if he's a useless emperor, then the Roman troops fight miserably. So, so the troops go along with the emperor. Now, Pilus Macrinus was a, was a weak emperor, so the Roman troops fought badly in the, in the, in the battle. And the Parthians, under the king, Sia, Sach and the banners defeated them at a city called Nisibis. And the Romans were, for, were forced to fall back to Antioch. They were, they were quite um, humiliated again. Now, 2018 is the final year of the Paleo Macrinus' life. And uh, what happened was two of his commanders, Iftihianus and Glanis, they supported the claims of a certain prince called Various Heliogabalos. Now, Various Heliogabalos was none other than the son of Sonia. He was a nephew of, uh, of, uh, of Julia Domna. So he was he was part of the royal family of Emesa, Homs, in modern day Syria. Now, let, let us remind people that Homs, Emesa, uh, had a royal line of Syrian kings, native Syrian, not Arabs, Syrian kings, who married. One of the king. So in this final year, 2018, commanders Iftihianus and Glanis supported Heliogabalos. Now, Julia Domna, who was part of the royal family of Emissa Homs, married Septimus Severus. So one of, his, one of her sisters was Julia Zoania, and her son was Heliogabalos. And the other nephew was Alexiano or, or Alexander. They lay claim to the, to, to the empire. Now, if the Hyannis and Glanis, who were probably bribed by the grandmother, the grandmother of Heliogabalos, supported the, the bribed these officers, and that's how. They, and, 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 okay, and a battle was fought between the supporters, the supporters of Apelius Macrinus. The supporters of this young little prince called Elio Gavalos, or various, uh, and because of bribery, because most of the, most of the soldiers were, were fed up of the Paris Macrinus, so the supporters the supporters of Elio Gavalos actually won the battle of Antioch in the summer of 218, because people were fed up of the Paris Macrinus, they thought. Well, 
they saw that Apelius Macrinus was a nobody. He was a Berber, he was not even Italian, he was not even Latin. So they gave up his claim, they supported Elia Lavacus. Now Macrinus was arrested and executed. Now, Elio Gavalos um, was a pervert, actually. And we have one of the sources, uh, Historia Augusta. The Historia Augusta, uh, written by anonymous writers in the 4th century AD, talks about all the, uh, all the, um, the sexual parties they did, all these pervert parties they did. Homosexual relationships, um, love triangles, and... And all these sort of things. Now, if you read, if you read the Historia Augusta, you see that uh, Nero, you see that Caligula is nothing compared to uh, Elio Gavalos. Elio Gavalos was only 14 when he succeeded the throne in, in 218. He was nothing. Uh, he was he was a, he was a young boy. He was 14, and he practically knew nothing about governing the empire. And yet, he was a pervert. All sorts of stories that he forced his commanders to be homosexuals, he forced the consuls, the senators to be homosexuals, and um, and he wanted to become uh, a, he wanted to become a transvestite and all these sorts of stories. But anyway, we're not going to focus on these stories. Some of them may be lies, some of them may be deliberate. And um, now, what happened was that in, in 221, two and a half years after his succession. Elio Gavalos was, fo was forced to appoint his cousin, Alexiano, who was also part of the Emissa dynasty of Syria, as his appointed son. Well, he was a cousin. Now, the cousin became the son, the adopted son. And in the same year, Elio Gavalos tried to murder his cousin, Alexiano, but the Praetorian guards and other troops uh, rushed to the side of, of Alexiano, Alexander, and they supported him. The claim of Alexander, and the else, and they almost, and they, cl and they try to murder uh, Elio Gavalos himself for being unfaithful to the pact. Uh, in the following year, 222, Elio Gavalos and Alexander were appointed consuls, uh, joint consuls. Elio Gavalos was a senior consul, and Alexander was the, the minor consul of the year. And he was forced to uh, appoint his cousin appointed son as the, in order to show that they, they were co-rulers so by by fixing uh, by fixing a, by fixing a consulship a fixed consul in, in, in this year they proved that they were co-rulers now Eliagabalus once again tried to break this pact and again he sent murderers to kill Alexander now this time now the first time Elio Gavalos tried to, uh, to try to murder his cousin, point son. It was his mother who actually saved his life, Soamia, uh, also known as Semiramis. And uh, she was also known to be uh, a licentious woman. Anyway, she saved his life. Now in the second time the second time Alexandra tried to kill his cousin, point son, his mother could not save him. And uh, we have a source claiming that uh, when the Praetorians actually murdered Elio Gavalos and his mother, Soamia, they dragged their bodies and they threw them in the Tiber. Another source claims that they threw them into a sort of sewer. So they cut the bodies up in pieces and they put them in the sewer, which was terrible, which was, uh, which was disgusting actually. But that's what that's how the Romans treated traitors, people who betrayed the uh, the Republic, people who were traitors, and in all the so and all the sources are actually um, biased against El Agavalos, who was after all a 14 year old boy, and during his four year reign he died at the age of 18. So a boy who was like 14 or 18, he doesn't really know much about ruling an empire. He hasn't really fought any battles. I mean. Um, he was just a pervert boy, and he liked boys, and um, he liked parties, he liked drinking. Um, so, so we can't really 
been so biased against the boy who was only 14 and he suffered from sexual desires or he was trying to find his own identity at that young tender age and uh, so it was probably his mother's fault and his grandmother's fault right, that he was he was not fit to rule perhaps at that time so anyway and now finally after the year 180, in 180, one of the finest Romans, one of the finest emperors Rome ever had, Marcus Aurelius, died of an ailment. And they took them, and they took Rome something like uh, 42 years to acquire a true emperor, an emperor who was true to the Roman Republic, who was uh, an intellectual and a good man as well. And his name was Alexander Severus or Alexiano, Alexianus in Latin. And again, he was part of the Emesa Homs dynasty. Um, his father may have been a Roman, but definitely his mother was a Syrian princess, related to, to Julia Domna, Julia Suamia, and the rest of the family. Now, um, Alexander Severus had uh, a great line of tutors. He had lots of uh, Greek, Latin, and perhaps a native Syrian or Phoenician uh, uh, tutors. He had uh, mathematicians, he had uh, all sorts of well, Now, Alexander Severus had a great line of intellectuals, doctors, um, geomet geometricians, mathematicians. Uh, and, um, he was also introduced into all sorts of uh, religions. Uh, he was also known to be uh, favorable to Christianity. He was also a pro-Christian, one of the first pro-Christian emperors, as even Marcus Aurelius was against the, the Christians. Even though Marcus Aurelius was the finest emperor Rome ever had, still he was against the Christians. And we see with Alexander, he was, he was favorable to them as well. Now, one of, the fine, one of the two finest people who were in his court, in the court of Alexander, now one of the two most important people who were in the court of Alexander, they were none other than Demetrius Ulpianus, the great Phoenician lawmaker, Demetrius uh, Ulpianus, who wrote laws for Rome, and then there was Cassius Dio, the, the Greek, the big Greek um, senator, historian, commander, who was behind the scenes and um, well after the death of Aurelius of course he was uh, hiding he was fearing all these tyrants and all these civil wars well, as were all the all these all the uh, intellectuals and what happened was that um, Demetrius Ulpianus was appointed the region of the young Alexander now let's not forget that Alexander Severus was also young. He was he was slightly older than Elagabalos. He was roughly the same age as so he was probably 18 or 16 when he took over after his cousin was murdered. Now, now what happened was now in the early days of, of his reign, the Praetorian guards they rebelled and they murdered Ulpianus. And the Praetorian, the Praetorian, the leading Praetorian who was uh, responsible for the death of Ulpianus was Epagathos. Perhaps he was a Greek man. Now we don't really know why why Ulpian was murdered, but there was um, and the people rose. Was was so we don't really know why these Praetorians killed Ulpianus, but the people, but the populace of Rome did not did not stand it, and they revolted, and there was sort of street fighting between the Praetorian guards and certain of the civilians of Rome, and Alexander, being one of the finest emperors, he, uh, he brought about a compromise. But his good, his good law-making um, region was sadly killed. Now, a few years later, uh, certain Berbers, uh, Berbers uh, or Mauritanians, they revolted and they were defeated by a certain commander called Curius Celsus. And a bunch of Illyrians also revolted. They were defeated by a certain various Mar Marcinus. Now, there was uh, there was a certain Macrinus, another Macrinus, 
who became the father-in-law of Alexander of, of, of Alexander Severus. Now, what happened was that Macrinus plotted. Right, Macrinus plotted against his son-in-law Alexander, but the plot was discovered. And what happened was that Macrinus was arrested and executed, and and, and Alexander's mother, Mamea, forced Alexander to divorce his wife. And this wife, we don't really know her name, she was exiled to Libya, somewhere in Libya. Now, now in the year 229, Cassius Dia was appointed consul along with the emperor himself. And this was not the first time that the, Greek, the, the great Greek historian, uh, commander, consul, the man behind the scenes, it was not the first time that he was appointed consul. But, According to Cassian Dio himself, so he writes about himself, he was forced to spend most of his consulship outside of Rome itself because he feared the Praetorian Guards. You see, the Praetorian Guards had had executed Demetrius Ulpianus, the regent and lawmaker, so he feared for his life. That's the year 2000, uh, 229. Now, in 2030, what happened was, around these years, there was, a, there was a civil war in Parthia, and the Persians, they rebelled against the Parthians, who were also Iranians, and there was fighting with the Hyrcanians and other Persian tribes. So in the civil war arose a, the new Persian Empire. So the Parthians, who rebelled against the successors of Alexander the Great, became uh, the rulers of the Iranian plateau, and now, around the year 2030, they were succeeded by the Persians themselves, themselves, and the first, the first emperor of, uh, of the new Persian Empire was called Artaxerxes. Right, and they started these Persians. They started raiding, raiding Roman Mesopotamia, and they besieged some Ro some uh, Roman forts. And the Shah sent 400 cavalrymen as emissaries to Alexander, and Alexander, of course, he had them arrested right, because he feared that they were spies or whatever. Right, and then, perhaps in the same year, a certain Ovidius Camillus planned to overthrow the emperor. And of course, this man, this this Camillus guy, he was arrested and he was sent to his estate. And later, later he was he was ordered to open up his veins or commit suicide. Because of treason. Perhaps Alexander tried to be uh, humane, but then perhaps he was forced by some of his uh, advisors to, to execute this man. Now, 2032 is an important year. Alexander himself, Alexander Severus himself, himself, campaigned against the new Persian Empire, and he actually defeated Shah Xerxes or Artaxerxes somewhere, somewhere in Mesopotamia, somewhere in modern Iraq, maybe. Um, now, according to the story of Gusta, this new army, this new Persian army, included 700 elephants, 1,800 scythes, chariots, and 120,000 cavalry, which is quite excessive. But anyway, all these people were defeated by um, by the Romans. Another Roman army, under Junius Palmatus, defeated the Armenian traitors, because, because some of the some of the Armenians were pro-Persian, and they, uh, the, the same force entered media via Armenia. And the Romans defeated the Persians in Armenia and in media. They captured several forts, and during this campaign, a, several, uh, a certain Taurinus rebelled against Alexander Severus, and he was arrested and executed like the rest of these usurpers. Now, this victory, this, this Roman victory against Persia, not Parthia, Persia, was quite important because, because uh, the Romans defeated, under the Romans under a real emperor, defeated the Persians at the outset of their, of their new empire. We're talking about the new Persian empire as opposed to the old Parthian empire. And this, and this new Persian empire, starting from roughly two, 229 AD, it lasted until 
the age of Muhammad, of Muhammad the prophet, the so-called prophet. And now, a couple of years later, in 235, there was unrest in, in, in Germania. Uh, uh, Maximinus Pupienus, a senator and a commander who late became, who briefly became emperor later on, he defeated the Germans and the Sarmatians in some unknown campaigns. And a group of Germans actually invaded Gaul and they devastated some cities. And Alexander Severus himself marched into Gaul and he defeated the Germans. And, uh, and he defeated some of the Germans who invaded Illyria, Illyria parts of modern day Yugoslavia. Uh, but what happened was all of a sudden this Thracian barbarian arrived. This, uh, Maximinus was a big, tall Thracian. He was not Italian, he was not Latin, he could barely speak the tongue. He was a barbarian, mercenary captain. And he was promoted Praetorian Guard. And somehow he, he undermined Alexander Severus in front of his Praetorians. And Alexander was murdered actually. Um, he, was, he was murdered along with his mother, Mamea, Julia Mamea, part of the Emesa dynasty. And thus ended the Severan dynasty, which was not Italian. We must, uh, we must note that it was, it, was, um, it was Phoenician and Syrian. Part of it was Phoenician from, from Tripoli, which is today Tripoli in Libya, and the rest of it was from Homs. Emesa, the royal family of Emesa. And uh, Alexander Severus was the only notable ruler out of the four. I mean, Septimus Severus was a good, was, uh, was a benefactor after the civil wars. But during the civil wars, he was ruthless, he was cunning. He, he executed thousands of, of senators and, and those who supported that. Now, um, Garagalla was a ruthless tyrant, but Perlis Macrinus was a was a useless emperor. He was he was a Berber. He was not even part of the family. He was not even Latin Italian. Elagabalos, as we said, was a young boy. He was only 14 years old. He was confused. He he was searching for his sexual identity, and he was not fit to rule. It was basically his grandmother and his mother Mamea who promoted him. And the true true princeps. Uh, during the Severan dynasty, he was Alexander Severus. He was cunning, and he was he was a wise man. He was educated. He was kind. He had he had good advisors like Ulpianus, Cassius Dio, the Greek historian, and um, he was kind. And that, that's that's why he was murdered. And after the murder of Alexander Severus, we see a series of, of useless usurpers. And it's because of them that now it's be, it was because of these useless usurpers that the Persians were able to march through Mesopotamia, Assyria, parts of Syria. Uh, a couple of years later, they, they even captured Antioch. They even captured uh, Valerianus, one of the later emperors. And uh, Ale Alexander Severus, or Alexianus, was open to all sorts of philosophies, all sorts of. Uh, new ideas, he was kind to the Christians, he was kind to the Jews, he was kind to the Greeks, and he had all sorts of, um, all sorts of tutors. Uh, he, was, he was kind, he was, like, he was like a new Octavian, only he was not, he was not a real Italian, he was not Latin. He was, and it was all because Garagalla, a couple of years back, gave the opportunity to non-Romans to, non to become Roman citizens. So you see Syrians, you see Greeks, you see uh, all sorts of uh, other pause. Right, and this new and, and this new Persian Empire, like we said, could win, could win the Romans if the Romans had a weak emperor. Now, if the Romans had a good emperor like Aurelianus, we'll talk about him soon. They could easily defeat the Persians. Um, now, Alexander. Uh, he was a sort of philosopher king. He was not. He was nothing like his cousin Elagabalos. He was a pervert. He was nothing like Galagala the tyrant. He was nothing like Alexander, uh, like Septimus Severus. He was. He was a benefactor, but he was a ruthless tyrant during the civil wars. 
Now we see Alexander had, uh, had several usurpers, but he did not go to length of I mean, killing all the relatives and all the, he just killed the particular uh, usurper. And that's the big difference between Septimus Severus and his, his civil wars. And sadly, this big, huge uh, Thracian barbarian, Maximus took over. This illiterate guy who was not even Latin. He just killed him during the, these, bar these barbarian raids in Gaul. And thus ended the great philosopher king, Alexander, Severus, or Alexiano, Alexianos. Right, this is a coin of the usurper, Opelius Macrinus who was a Mauritanian. And this is a bust of the young Eliogavalos, the weak emperor. And finally, this is Alexander Severus, one of the finest emperors Rome had.